but you guys have been around for a few years. What do you accredit the longevity of your success? Why are people still in love with you so much? Well, we thank God for that. I mean, we started back in 1964. 64. As the Jazz Yaks. Yeah. And then it was, it was you and your brother, uh, right? You and your brother? And yeah, my brother, and, uh, DT, and, uh, and George. And then it was uh, Soul Town. Soul Town was a backup. We were the backup band in Soul Town. Soul Town wanted to be like Motown. So we had to learn the Motown hits to play behind the local Jersey City town. So we was playing Beauty on the Skin Deep and uh, The Temptations, Smokey Robinson, and then we changed the name to the, uh, it was changed to uh, Cool and the Flames. Now, we had to change it from Cool and the Flames because you had James Brown and the Famous Flames. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we didn't have, uh, didn't want to have any problems. You don't accept too close to the Godfather. We didn't want to have any problems with the Godfather. Nobody wants problems with the Godfather. We decided, well, let's, let's just change uh, flame to game. And uh, that's how I started. I missed one, one name. It was the Jazzy Act was first. The Jazzy Act in 1964. Then the uh, Soul Town Band. And then the Cool in the Flame. And then Cool in the Game. Oh, no. And... Yeah, absolutely. But no, we started, oh, I know what you're talking. Yeah, we started rehearsal. We played, when we were the jazz and there was this place, a church that had a room downstairs, and we used to go, we played in this church, and uh, every, uh, every every Sunday it would be jazz, you know, uh, Phil Sanders, uh, McCoy Tyne, and all those guys, yeah. And who inspired you? So when you were just getting into the business, before you were, before you were cool, before you were cool in the gang, when you were just, Robert or Bob or Bobby, when you're just what artists inspired you? Who, who did you see and thought, wow? Well, I used to uh, listen to Stevie Wonder. Mm, yes. uh, I was only, we were about the same age. I was only about 14 years old when Stevie started at that time. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, that's Stevie Wonder. I want to be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Stevie used to come to Youngstown, Ohio. I was born in Youngstown, Ohio. And I moved to uh, Jersey City. And that's when the band started, Jersey City. Oh, I mean, it was others, Marvin Gaye, James Brown, it's quite a few. And how does, at what point do do you get called cool? Have you been always been called cool, or how did you get to be cool? Okay, I'm trying to make that a short story. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, there's people in this room that are here because you are here on this cruise. You can make it as long as you want. You are Robert Cool Bell. You can tell us, you can talk all the way back and forth. Well, like I said, I was uh, born in Youngstown, Ohio. We came to Jersey City in 1960. And in Jersey City, there were different guys who had nicknames, and New York, Newark, and I tried to fit in. And uh, my uh, mother took me to the store to get uh, some loosey bread. Now, I was only 25 cents back in the day. And this guy took my money. I said, well, here's a country boy coming to, you know, around, you know, Jersey, Newark. I said, how Rolled you for your quarter. Yeah, how do I deal with this? <laughs> anyway, I, a couple, one of the guys uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the neighborhood had a, had a name called Cool Spelled with a C. He said, well, I said, well, I like that. I'm gonna take that name and spell it with a K. And then I'm going to see if I can survive in the hood. <laughs> Keep my quarter to get some bread. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that was the beginning of cool man. You know? So, that's how old were you at that time? I was only about 14. No, I was younger than that. I mean, it came in 1960. I was about, maybe about 12. So 12 is when you, yeah. and you, you picked the name cool and dropped the K on it because you didn't want the C. That's right. I like that. I like that. And it, did it work? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, didn't, they didn't get you for your bread money from then on out. You managed to make it. Yeah, I, I, I managed how to deal with survival in the hood. <laughs> but now it was all good. At what point in time, so we're talking about when you're 14, you, you're, 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 you, but it's not just a hobby. This is something you really can and will do professionally. When does that realization start to come about? Well, it, it started back... Uh, in, in Jersey City, uh, backing up these groups, 
uh, playing jazz, and I mutually started to evolve into a mixture of R&B and jazz. And uh, we just loved what we were doing, you know, and it just grew, and then we, we met a manager uh, who introduced us to uh, Red Coach Records, and then he signed us to Delight Records, and we came out with our first record, uh, July 3rd, 1969. So, All right. 1969. So this July 3rd will be 50 years. Wow. Yeah, it's been around 50 years, yeah? yeah we've been around for 40 years. We like 50. 50's perfect. Keep it up here. It's a clean number, clean number. Now, uh, a question I love asking superstars, what was the moment you realized you'd made it? What was your moment? Some stars say it was the first time they got a full, a big, nice, beautiful royalty check. Uh, Mickey Dolan's told me that uh, when he had signed with the monkeys, that you'd made it. I would say um, mid-70s. We had what I call territorial record kits. Funky Granny, Funky Man, Boots and Soul, Seeds Ryan Clothy, a lot of these songs you probably know, Tony Young. You know. The record company uh, came and put some pressure on us. He said, listen, you guys haven't uh, come up with a big hit. I said, okay, so it was this producer who produced Soul Makusa. Mm -hmm. Is that record? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And uh, he, he said, I want you guys to use this producer. So we met with the producer and we weren't quite feeling him, you know. So we went back into rehearsal hall like at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we grooved all night. By midnight, we had funky stuff, jungle boogie, and how we get fun. You get the same number of pounds from the record company. So that was the part, because those records were big records. So our top five, top four, top oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. number one R&B for seven, eight weeks. At that time, we felt like we made it. And you guys, were, you guys were pounding out these beats. You're, you're running hard. How do you know it's a hit? How do you know it's not just a, you have hundreds of songs, hundreds and hundreds, a lot of songs that didn't make it that maybe you thought were hits. Do you know when one's gonna hit? Well, we really didn't know. We just felt that these records felt good. You know, and uh, once you get to radio and to a uh, public, you know, but uh, those those records felt very good. You know, it was different Jungle Boogie. So what is that, Jungle Boogie? What's the Jungle Boogie? <laughs> <laughs> but Hollywood Swing. Yeah. 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 Hollywood Crocker out of New York. He broke that record in New York. They called him Hollywood. And we always wanted to get to Hollywood. So we were always talking about it. And that's what, I mean, those are big records. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you have any big hits that surprised you? Any songs that you thought, well, it's good, we love it, but we don't know if it's gonna have commercial success, and then did, did any of them take you off guard? I would say, uh, Summer Madness. Yeah! yeah. Oh, no. This is my love for clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Summer Madness was the B-side of Spirit of the Boogie. Mm -hmm. That's when you had A-side, B-side singers. And it was a DJ in Chicago, he flipped the record over as he played some of that. Yeah. And uh, the phones lit up and said, well, who was that? <laughs> you know, he said, yes, sir. Oh, Herbie Hancock. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, several other groups at the time. Like the Jazzy Axe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that record surprised him. Some of that is, uh, went on to be, you know, it was in the Rocky movie when uh, Sylvester was laying on the bed. He had yeah. that fight the next day or whatever. Will Smith, he had a good time with it. He took it and made summertime. He got a number one in a black one right yeah. yeah. That one really fun. What about the other way? Is there any, are there any songs you have that you thought, oh, this is, but didn't hit? <laughs> any, any songs you thought to yourself in your, I mean, outside, you obviously have so many mega, mega. Things. I would say, uh, Songs like Good Times or The Funky Man. Yeah. You know, we felt good about those records. But then, you know, it, it was until we moved on towards the, uh, I guess, the crossover pop side, sure. when we got the lead singer, then you had hits like Cherish, Get Down On, Fresh and everything. Right. But uh, those songs, uh, we felt that uh, we, we did pretty good. 
Well, they're not. But a lot of our fans know those songs. Yeah, they will. Because they go, hey, man, play Funky Man. Funky what? <laughs> <laughs> play Funky Man. I don't even play that in years. <laughs> play Good Time. You ain't play that in years. <laughs> you know? But they're all good records. But they're the rappers, though. They, yeah. they, they love it because they sample all of them. Yeah. They sample Funky Man, took a little part from Good Time, took another part from this song. Yep. You know, they love, that's why they said that we're one of the most sampled bands uh, in the industry. Oh, hell yeah. Because they would take their songs and sure. oh, that's the part to read. They said, oh no, take that part in. No, take the Good Time part. <laughs> you know. Look at all your kids, right? Look at all your kids, which ones are going to come to the party? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, our music director, uh, who's downstairs now, we'll get it all together. Uh, Curtis Webb just come up with uh, some of the ideas that we want to do. It depends on if we're doing 60 minutes, 75 minutes, or, or a 90 minute show. We want five days. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we got enough of music for that, I tell you that. Oh, yeah. That's the, and that's what I mean. You guys have so much good music. Yeah. If, if, if someone were to say we want a 60-minute show, I mean, do you just basically start with your number ones and then, you know, well, just take what you can to get to 60, or is there... It's a show that we had to change because they only gave us 55 minutes. What? That was it wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> that was with Van Hill. The only guy I got is 55 what? minutes. And some of his fans said, cool, the gang and man, hell. I was actually in the building. It makes sense. That don't work. He said, David, so David was over in London. He saw us at the uh, uh, a big festival over there. Uh, Glastonbury Festival they have every year. Huge and, festival. Oh, yeah. They have huge. U2 and Coldplay and a lot of the other groups. And he saw us there. He said, he told uh, Alex and, uh, and uh, Eddie, said, I'm a cool guy to be my supporter. He said, what? He said, listen, you guys want me back? That's when he came back for his uh, celebration, a 50-year celebration, or 20 years, whatever it was. Yeah. And uh, so he uh, uh, he uh, uh, said to hey man, you guys did celebration, we had jump. He said, you guys did ladies night. He said, you'll find that my audience is gonna be 60% ladies. So really? He said, back in the 70s, we used to play your music in the club. We used to play funky stuff and Jungle Boogie. I didn't know that either. So, we started to set off like with Fresh. Mm -hmm. And then we did a little misled, a little bit of uh, uh, emergency, <laughs> just to show that we can do a little rock. Mm -hmm. But when we got to Ladies Night, get that on in celebration, that's when the ladies jumped up and all the hardcore Van Halen fans, they know the guy from that. This is Van Halen rock and roll. <laughs> when we played ladies, like, the ladies jumped up and they looked at those guys that came with them. He said, Shh, you better get down on it. <laughs> you can't hear me. Our next song was Get Down On It. And our last song was Celebration. So ladies night, Get Down On a Celebration, it was over. And we had fun with Van Halen for 42 shows. 42 wow. shows. 42 wow. shows, yeah. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Stop and the middle of the tour, he said, listen, he do something careless somewhere. He got album boots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had these big uh, rubber boots on his own. He said, listen, Cool in the Gang is not my opening act. Cool in the Gang is my support act. She said, just like it was, I think he said, with uh, the Rolling Stones, mm -hmm. and I think, um, I don't know if it was Dino Ross, but he, he made a statement. He said, these are not open to that. But a lot of times, you know, people, they don't, oh, who's, who's opening the show? I'm going to wait until Van Halen come out. You know, I ain't coming to see those guys. They, yeah. They be getting their popcorn and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's the good news. Yeah. In this business, as you're attesting to, in this business, the act that goes on last is often viewed as the headliner. We've done five days of disco cruising, and you are the final act hitting the stage tonight. So, so you tell me that we got to get down on tonight. We've been calling you for the last four or five days. I'm so I'm just saying good act, good act. It's phenomenal act. And I'm just saying people have been waiting. You know, people have been waiting. I've had people ask, is, where's Cool? Is he on the yeah. ship yet? What's going on with Cool? Is he gonna make it? Is, uh, did, you, did you check his flight? Did his flight get in? Is he gonna be here? Because I'm gonna have to get off the cousin now if Cool doesn't make it on board. Uh, yeah, 
we on the road today now. Um, we do several cruises, and we used to get on, do the show, and then we leave. And then uh, the producer, why? We're on it. Where's cool again? Everybody walking around the next day, no more cool again. We're gone. But this time, so we're locking them in. They're going to be there. Oh, okay. <laughs> What are you seeing when you walk around? Are you seeing good fans? Are you seeing people that are here for a good time? How does it feel to I'm seeing I've only been here for a couple of days. It's, it's been great. I mean, everybody's been partying. And I've been catching some of the shows, too. Yeah. You know, out there by the pool. We appreciate yeah. you. Uh, wow. Right in here. Yeah. 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 My favorite part about disco music, well, I have many, but my favorite part about disco music, two things. One, nobody can be mad to disco music. <laughs> You just, it's not like you can sit in the audience and be up. When's the last time you did a show? Oh, a couple of days ago. See, see, that's not big. A couple of days, yeah, you guys are. New York? Up well, in New last York. year we did, uh, we did the uh, Soul Train. Yep. Was here. Yeah. So you're coming off a performance a couple of days ago. Yeah. You're doing a couple of shows for us tonight, and then what's next for you guys? We're going out to the West Coast. Out to the West Coast? out there, yeah. Philadelphia is not on the West Coast. What did you say? Yeah. Four hours? <laughs> 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 We're on the West Coast. We're going to Philadelphia. We're going to Philadelphia. L.A. Uh, and uh, Northern Cal. Sacramento. Sacramento. I have one question. What do you got? What do you use uh, on your face? You are so handsome. Are you oh. saying young? <laughs> what are you using? She said, you are so handsome. You look so young and beautiful. Oh, beautiful. What are you using on your face? That's a common question for a, a man who's sitting there. I'm, 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 That's my bucket list, to see world peace. That's my bucket list. 